Hello and welcome. This is a video on mass spectrometry for A-level chemistry. Now this video is going to be focusing on how to predict major fragments, especially for compounds containing the carbonyl group. We're also going to be going through two exam style questions and we're going to be ending off with how mass spectrometry is used in anti-doping labs. So, organic compounds are compounds with carbons in their backbone, and the reason why they're called organic is because of their role in the chemistry of life. So, for example, the amino acids and the proteins in our body have carbon in their backbones. Now, the reason why I'm focusing on organic compounds in terms of mass spectrometry is because generally organic compounds don't hold charge very well and as a result they break down into what we call fragments so here is an example of an organic molecule called pentane now if you pass pentane through the mass spectrometer you get one electron knocked off somewhere in the molecule so you end up with this molecular ion over here now I've shown a positive charge over here because you've lost one electron and I've also shown a free radical dot because somewhere in the molecule will be an electron that is unpaired. Now this is fairly unstable and it will break into these fragments over here. Now I've just shown only one example it can break up into many different fragments and this can be detected in the mass spectrometer. Now some of this or some of this molecular iron will be will be going through the mass spectrometry unchanged and as a result you'll be able to work out the relative formula mass of this compound. So here's an example of a simplified mass spectrum. Now each one of these little peaks or lines represents a fragment that was once part of a molecule. Now the first thing that you'll be able to notice is that each of these peaks are at different heights and that raises the question does the peak height actually matter the answer to that question is obviously yes because the peak heights tell us how common that particular fragment is also known as percentage abundance now the more common a fragment is the more stable that it's going to be now to illustrate this idea of stable fragments I'm going to use the example pentan 2 own now this molecule can fragment at various different sites over here over here and so on however one particular cleavage or fragmentation will be more preferred than others so here's an example if I was to fragment the molecule at this site so the molecule will lose that CH3 group and let's say you end up with a positive carbon over here this is also known as a carbocation now this positive carbon is going to be stabilized by the lone pair on this oxygen so that would be a very very stable fragment and therefore will have a very very high percentage abundance so we'll end up with something like this so we have a mass to charge ratio of 7 to 1 for this portion of the molecule and for this portion the CH3 has a mass to charge ratio of 15 in the mass spectrum it will look something like this you can quite clearly see that the portion of the molecule with the carbonyl group has got a taller peak than the one that's got no carbonyl group which is the methyl group. So here's the pentan 2 urn we looked at earlier and the two fragments which it splits into. Now it can, like I said, split into various other fragments. I've just chosen this as an example. Now I've put the uh, molecule into these brackets and the symbols are just on the outside of the bracket. Now that's fine, you don't have to put it into brackets but I just find it easier for me to do it this way and also it decreases uh, the chances of you making a mistake especially if you put say this positive sign uh, on the wrong carbon for example you could actually lose a mark so by putting it into brackets and putting the symbols on the outside uh, means that you'll reduce that chance so to write an equation is quite straightforward just you just write the structural formula so you've got your molecular ion over here fragmenting into these two fragments now you can just also write the molecular formula so count up all the number of carbons followed by the number of hydrogens and so on that's also acceptable Alright guys, so here is an exam question from one of the Unit 4 chemistry papers. I'm going to let you pause the video, read this and have a go at answering this question. Okay, so 
what you'll notice is that I've highlighted all the key points in the question so the fragment that you're focusing on has to have a mass to charge ratio of 44 you need to write an equation and in your answer you have to show the displayed formula for this fragment iron which has a mass to charge ratio of 44 now it's just a simple case of experimenting with different sites of cleavage and figuring out if there are any um, molecular fragments which have a mass to charge ratio of 44 so here is the actual answer so here I've got my displayed formula of the molecular iron you don't have to you can write it as the molecular formula shown below and this fragments into these two fragments over here now if you look at this over here if you add up the masses of all the elements in this fragment it adds up to 44 so this is the correct fragment that the question is referring to so that means the positive charge has to be on this carbon and not on this other fragment over here because don't forget the free radical doesn't get um, detected in the mass spectrometer so if you put it on that you actually get no mark you can also put this into brackets like so that's also acceptable now the first time you see this question you think oh my god this looks really complicated don't worry because what you will notice is that all this information over here is actually not required to answer in the question it's just a bit of background information uh, on this molecule TCDD the bit that matters is just below this line over here now I just want to say um, that I was looking at the examiner's report for this question and one of the things that the examiner said was this question was designed as a challenging question and in fact most of the students across the UK on the AQA uh, chemistry syllabus actually got this part of the question wrong so if you get this right you've done really really well so I'm gonna let you pause the video and have a go at this question yourself okay so first part of the question is asking you to figure out the number of molecular iron peaks okay bearing in mind that chlorine has two isotopes so one of the isotopes is chlorine 35 and has a relative abundance of 75 percent the other isotope is chlorine 37 and that has a relative abundance of 25 percent so let's just start off with all of these chlorine atoms in this molecule being chlorine 35 okay so if you use the molecular formula you can work out the, the relative formula mass of this whole compound and that will be your first molecular ion the next thing we have to do is to substitute one of these chlorines let's say this one with a chlorine 37 that changes the mass number to 322 now this is a different molecular ion so that's molecular ion number two and then you change another chlorine to chlorine 37 so now you've got molecular ion number three you change the third chlorine to 37 so now you've got three chlorine 37s and one chlorine 35 that gives you your molecular ion number four and finally you change all of them or the last chlorine to chlorine 37 and you get your fifth molecular ion so the answer to that is five number of molecular iron peaks the next question says what is the mz value of the most abundant molecular iron peak now remember that chlorine 35 is the most abundant chlorine isotope so most likely the most abundant molecular iron will be molecular iron number one where all the chlorine atoms are chlorine 35 okay now the examiner has given a mark if you said 322 because there still is that likelihood that one of the chlorines could be chlorine 37 so the answer to that is 320 now mass spectrometry has a wide range of uses and one such use is in anti-doping labs where scientists can identify illegal substances in athletes urine uh, before or after sporting events now commonly this mass spectrometry is tied to something called GC which stands for gas chromatography and what the gas chromatography does is that it just separates all the uh, different components in a mixture before passing on to the mass spectrometer now the mass spectrometer identifies uh, these individual components and to make the identification process easier 
we use something called a mass spectrometry database. Now this database just contains the fragmentation patterns of all the known illegal drugs. So if you look at over here, I've got steroid A for example, and this steroid has a unique fragmentation pattern that no other molecule has. So if a compound that uh, is found in athlete's urine has the exact same fragmentation pattern, then that can only mean that the athlete has abused that particular drug. So that is the end of the video. Please don't forget that there are some exam questions in the link below in the description box. Now if you have any other comments uh, such as how the video can be improved or if you liked it overall then please feel free to drop a comment below. Thank you for watching.